Hello everyone, this is Damien, and welcome to another episode of Beginner's Java. Uh, this is going to be episode number 19, um, and we're going to talk a bit about try-catch, a little bit about files, a little bit about reading from files. So I'm going to make a couple of errors throughout this. Uh, they're hopefully going to be the intentional errors that I mean to make, um, but we'll see. So we're going to start by typing in import java.io.file. Um, I'm actually going to add a space before that because I don't think that's going to be the first one we need. java.io.file not found exception. We're going to also do import java.io.file buffered reader and we're also going to do import uh, actually it should be below file java.io.file reader okay and just for the hell of it import java.io.io exception so before we continue on, I'm going to tell you guys what an exception is, sort of your operating definition of an exception. Um, an exception basically is when your program is running and it's doing its thing and it's doing it nicely, and all of a sudden an exception is an error that your program isn't expecting. Um, and an exception does what is called, uh, it's, it's thrown meaning it, it arises and it, it has that error condition inside of your uh, method that it's invoked by. And when it's thrown, it needs to be handled. Um, or, well, when an exception happens, it needs to be ha handled. When it's thrown, it needs to be handled by whatever it's contained in. Anyways, we'll, we'll get into that. So, first things first, we're going to create a string and we'll call it line. Um, and I'm just going to set it to, I'll set it to null. Um, it's really no difference between, well, there there is a difference between that and null, um, but for this case, there won't be a difference. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a buffered reader. Um, we're going to name it br. And we can do that, and if we want, we can set that equal to null if we want. Um, again, it shouldn't really make a difference. So there's two different ways I could show you guys how to use a try. Um, I'm going to show you guys the really new and shiny way. Um, try catch is usually like this. And you're going to have something like exception e, and then do something like, and I apparently hit insert, e dot print stack trace. So that's the basis of what a try catch is going to look like. So anything you put in the try, if it throws an error, it will be caught by this. So when you have this exception e, with no like IO exception, no file not found exception, nothing specific like that. When you just do exception, that means it will catch anything. Um, I'd say about 90% of the time in Java, you're going to be using just exception E um, because you just want to catch the exception and go, okay, I got it. It happened. I'm sorry. And then you fix it however you fix it or you just print it out to an error log and then you figure out why it happened later um, try with resources is a little different so what try with resources is is it's a new thing in java 7 uh, which is the most recent revision if you're not running java 7 this will not work so instead you put a try with uh with little parentheses here and then you put into the parentheses whatever you want to do so in this case I want to do br equals and I'm going to type in new buffered reader and then I'm going to do in parentheses here new file reader 
And then in here, I'm going to type in um, gettysburg.txt. And hopefully that worked. Why didn't that work? Uh, BR cannot be resolved to a type. Okay, so rather than doing it up here, I'm actually going to change it so it's not set up there. And I'll just declare my variable within the try since I'm not going to need it outside of my try statement. So this is telling me that it needs a file not found exception um, because it's possible that this file might not be found. In this case, I've actually already set it up, so I do have a Gettysburg file in my Eclipse Projects testing folder. So that is there. So, But even though it's there, it doesn't check before you compile to see, hey, is everything here? You know, it, it never makes that assertion. Uh, again, BR is also telling us that there's an I.O. exception that could happen. Um, and it's telling us the reason why as well. Let me sort of adjust this. Uh, it's not going to let me do it. When I move the mouse over for the camera, it's it's not quite going to catch it. But what it's saying is that there's an unhandled exception um, when the try will automatically close this. So let me type in my catch, and I'll explain what that means. So the first catch we're going to handle is file not found uh, exception. And we'll call it FNF. And we're going to do FNF. Actually, we'll do system.out.er.println. And we're going to say file not found. Oops. And then after that, we'll do fnf.printStackTrace. And I don't know why that didn't. Why are you not happy? fnf.print. What is going on with this? OK. I don't know why that was just really unhappy at me. I was just typing, and it's like, nope, everything you're doing is wrong. Okay. Oh, because I didn't spell exception right. Okay, so now the second thing we're going to try catching is <laughs> try catching, try catch. Ah. <laughs> so is IO exception, and we're going to call this IOE. And here we're going to do just a, uh, you know what? Let's let's keep it going. We'll just copy this, and we'll say. Uh, another system.er.println where we say IO exception happened. Again, neither of these things should happen. Um, and we're going to do IOE.print stack trace. Now, what print stack trace does is it, is it prints the last things that called on the function that errored out. So lastly we're going to do what's called a catch-all and we type in exception e. When you just leave it with that normal exception it will or it should catch anything that it knows how to catch. So in this case we'll just do e.printStackTrace for the sake of time. And if we give this a run nothing should happen in terms of output but we'll see that it made it through. None of these catch conditions came through. Um, if I were to come down here and move this Gettysburg text to just above where it was normally. Oops, I did not mean to copy my working folder. I meant to kill that and move it up here. Okay, so if I run this again, you'll see that it's printed out file not found, whoops, which is from here. And then it prints out, you know, where what happened. And so it's telling us that, you know, file input stream tried to open something and that something was invoked on line 13. We look over and it's trying to open gettysburg.txt. We look and gettysburg.txt isn't there. So we can safely assert that when it's there, it works. And when it doesn't, well, it doesn't work. So... 
if we wanted to print out the Gettysburg address, which I have in that file, um, it's actually on two lines. It's probably not as well formatted as it might, or as it should be. What we're going to do is we're going to make a while statement. And what, what we're going to say is while, and we're going to set up uh, a nested set of parentheses, and we're going to say line equals br dot read line. And then outside of that, we're going to say is not equal to null. And then we're going to open a set of braces. And we're going to simply say system.out.println. And we're going to do line. So let's kind of walk through the logic here. I have this string, and I named it line, and I set it equal to null. And then I set that equal to br.readline. And I say, if it's not null, output it. When it becomes null, meaning there is no next line for it to read, it will become null, and this will exit. Until then, it's going to come through each line and output it. So we do that, and we can see that, you know, it has printed out what we've expected it to. Again, if we went ahead and, um, and changed the structure of this, it would be a little bit different. Um, you'll see that I've included file and I haven't used it. So this kind of ugly buffered reader br equals new buffered reader new file reader gettysburg.txt what we can do is to make that a little less ugly or a little more ugly depending on your sensibilities we can create a file name it f and say new file and then in here do gettysburg.txt um, that should be in quotations and we can change where it says gettysburg.txt here to f. And this sort of just acts as a pointer to where our file is. So sometimes this will make it easier to read for people. Sometimes this will make it harder to read for people. Um, it's really a matter of preference. So again, this is a lot of the, the syntax and markup is what you want it to be. Um, as for the tabs, you guys might have noticed that I'm fairly anal about my tabs and, and keeping them appropriate. If you find that sometimes your program looks like this and you have like weird uh, tabs that might not make sense, you can hit Control A to highlight everything and Control I and it will realign your program for you. That's part of, um, uh, what is it, source and then correct indentation. You can also do format, which will break it down to the way that it thinks it should be formatted. Um, again, it makes my catches on multiple lines, and I don't really like that. Um, I think that catches are typically so basic that they can be put onto one line. Um, if you do find yourself maybe doing more than a system.er.println and a uh, print stack trace, you know, and you're actually doing things in there that are way more complicated, then yeah, definitely break it out into multiple lines. But if you're just doing error output like this, I wouldn't even worry about it. Um, last sort of thing, there is another thing called finally. And what finally is, is it's sort of the wrap up after a try catch. So if you have anything else that needs to happen after a catch, it needs to go inside of finally. So if this were inside of a method, once the catch happens, it, it'll typically try to return or at least kick out to an outer loop or something like that. Uh, finally means that you might need to save a value or assign a value even if you think it's wrong. Um, and so that's kind of what finally is for. I don't have a good example because of the way that I've sort of structured this. So with that said, um, that's try, catch, finally, and reading from a file. Uh, I will post this source code up. Um, it, it'll be in the description of this video. Um, if you guys need any help or if this wasn't completely clear, I know that a lot of the time uh, I don't have this memorized. Um, this is something that you'll probably type out once in your professional career and then just copy paste 
because the syntax on it's kind of a pain in the ass and it's just arbitrarily difficult. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this lesson. Uh, again, any questions, comment below. Thank you.